What's up, world? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Just Grow Up the Podcast. I'm your host, Big City Gardener, and we're still talking seed starting this week. Today, we're going to go over five reasons why you may have trouble getting your seeds to germinate. Let's get to it. If you listened to this show before, then you know I am a big fan of growing everything that we possibly can from seed. But in order to do that, the first step is to make sure we have proper germination. There's nothing worse than starting a bunch of seeds only to come back and realize less than 50% germinated. That is one of the worst feelings that you can feel as a gardener. But rather than be upset, like I like to say, there are no losses, just lessons. Let's talk about five reasons why your seeds may not germinate. The first one, quality seed. You need to make sure you are starting with fresh, viable, high-quality seeds, preferably organic seeds at that. Seeds are the first step towards success on your gardening adventure. Now, if you're not starting with fresh seeds, then you are already decreasing your chances of having a high germination rate. Even though we're able to store seeds, we have to make sure we are storing them properly. Storing your seeds improperly will lead to a decrease in the quality and the life of the seeds. So if we're starting off with lower quality seeds, then the chances are you're going to have a lower germination rate. Higher quality seeds, the higher the germination rate. Now, if you have a brand new pack of seeds and they're still not germinating, more than likely it is an environmental issue. So let's talk about those. The second reason why you may have problems getting your seeds to germinate is Are you using clean equipment? If you've listened to this show before, or you've caught any of the past episodes on this seed starting week that we're on, then you have heard me talk about the importance of sterilizing your equipment. Now, if you've listened to any of the episodes during this seed starting week, you've heard me talk about the importance of starting off with good, clean growing equipment. Dirty seed starting equipment can harbor all sorts of pests and diseases, and these pests and diseases They're part of the reason why some of your seeds may not be germinating. So if you notice that you frequently have seeds that aren't germinating, you should definitely try cleaning your seed starting equipment. Number three, soil temperature. It is extremely important to pay attention to the soil temperature. Oftentimes, people think that the temperature in a room and the soil temperature are the same, but that is not the case. You can be in a warm room and still have cool soil. So, if you're noticing that a lot of your seeds aren't germinating, it may be because you need to increase the soil temperature. One way to do that is by setting your seed starting tray on top of a seedling heating mat. The seedling heating mat will help to warm that growing medium. See, a lot of seeds like to germinate in the spring and summertime whenever it's warm outside. And whenever it's warm outside, that usually means that the soil is warm. So since we are trying to start these seeds indoors, we need to recreate all of the same environmental conditions that they are used to. And that is warm soil. So to warm the soil, you can try a seedling heating mat or you can put your seed start tray on top of your refrigerator and that works the same as a heat mat. Remember, not all plants like the same soil temperatures. Things that like to grow in the spring and summer, those prefer a warmer soil temperature in order to germinate. And that temperature is usually around 70 to 80 degrees. Now, things that like to grow in the fall, like our sweet peas, broccoli, and even kale, plants like that, they prefer a cooler soil temperature. You're looking to have around 55 to 65 degrees soil. So for fall and winter crops, you do not need a seedling heating mat. Just remember that. Number four, number four has to do with the proper growing medium and the right moisture within that medium. Now, what we want to do is to try to use a seed starting mix, something that is light, airy, and fluffy, something that retains enough moisture to keep our seedlings moist until they germinate, but we don't want something like potting mixes or potting soils that are known for retaining a lot of moisture. An excess amount of moisture will cause your seeds to rot. Then there's no way they're going to germinate. Also, we need to pay attention to the moisture levels in our medium. 
Now, before we start our seeds, you'll always hear me tell you to pre-moisten your seed starting mix. And that's because we want to make sure that the entire pot or the entire cell is moist. Whenever we're starting seeds and trying to get them to germinate, we want to make sure that we keep our medium moist. We don't allow it to dry out. If we allow the medium to dry out, that means that the seed will not have the moisture that it needs to germinate. On the flip side, if our medium is retaining too much water, then that means that our seed can become waterlogged and end up rotting. And if that's the case, we're not going to get anything to germinate. So that's why it's important to use the right seed starting mix as well as pay attention to the moisture levels in our seed starting cells or pots or whatever you're starting your seeds in. Number five. Now, the fifth reason why your seeds may not be germinating properly is did you plant them at the proper depth? It's important to make sure that you are not planting your seeds too deeply. If you plant your seed too deep in the seal starting mix, then you could end up with the problem. And the problem is the plant will not have enough energy or strength to push its way all the way through the seed starting mix to the top where it can start to receive the light that it needs to grow. Now, if we sow the seed too shallow, what ends up happening is the plant's roots are not going to be deep enough in our cell or pot to access all of the moisture that we have. So what could end up happening is your seed starting cells or cups or pots, whatever you're starting your seeds in, could end up drying out too quickly. Not to mention, whenever you plant the seed too shallow, the roots are not able to form at the ideal depth. And you usually end up with the plant that needs to be staked because it doesn't have a good base. It's not able to anchor itself deep into the soil. While that's not a big problem when you're growing things like tomatoes or tomatillos that are able to root from their main stem, while this may not be an issue for plants like tomatoes or tomatillos that are able to root from its main stem, not all plants have that ability. So let's make sure that we are sowing our seeds at the proper depth. The sixth and final reason why you may be experiencing germination issues has to deal with how you store your seeds. We need to be storing our seeds in a cool, dry, dark environment. Now, if we can store our seeds in an airtight container, that's even better. Why? Well, the air contains moisture, and what we want to do is make sure we are not exposing our seeds to moisture. Because as we know, seeds need moisture, light, and the right temperature in order to germinate. So we do not want to expose the seeds to these conditions until we are actually ready to get our garden started. So storing your seeds properly is extremely important for the germination rate as well as the length and lifespan of your seeds. Better seed storage, better germination rates. Now, those are the six main reasons why you may be experiencing germination problems. A few other things that you could be experiencing are maybe your seeds need scarification, and that's where you just kind of rub the exterior of the seed to help break down the hard exterior. So that way it's easier for moisture to get inside the seed and jumpstart the whole seed starting process. That's it for this episode of Just Grow Up the Podcast. I'm your host, Big City Gardener. I want to say thank you to everybody who downloads and listens to the show. It really means a lot to me. And I also want to say thank you to everybody who leaves me a review or a comment. You don't know how much that really helps. I have a goal to turn this into a top 10 gardening podcast this year, and I can only do it with your help. So if you enjoyed this episode or found it informative, please let one, two, three, ten friends know the more the merrier. I'm trying to get everybody to get their hands outside in the dirt and just grow it. And I can only do that with your help. So once again, thanks for checking out this episode of Just Grow It. Until next time, you guys take it easy. Mm-hmm.